It was billed as a tell-all from a couple now outside the confines of the British monarchy. I mean, that's the sad irony of the last four years as I've advocated for so long for women to use their voice. And then I was silent. Um, were you silent or were you silenced? The latter. The two-hour interview comes amid mounting friction between Buckingham Palace and the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. The couple made the decision to leave the UK and their official royal roles nearly two years ago. In the interview, Meghan described what life was like for her in the royal family. She said when she was pregnant, palace officials spoke to the couple about the upcoming birth of their son, Archie. The conversation of he won't be given security, he's not going to be given a title. and also concerns and conversations about how dark his skin might be when he's born. She says tabloid scrutiny in life within the royal family made her miserable and lonely. She says at her lowest point, she thought about committing suicide. I just didn't want to be alive anymore. And that was a very clear and real and frightening constant thought. Before this interview, Meghan accused the palace of orchestrating a smear campaign. Last week, the British newspaper The Times ran a report where sources claimed she treated some of her staff so badly that they quit. The palace, which normally is silent on anything published in the papers, said it was concerned about the allegations and would investigate, which it notably did not do over Prince Andrew's sexual abuse allegations. Not only was I not being protected, but that they were willing to lie to protect other members of the family, but they weren't willing to tell the truth to protect me and my husband. CBS reportedly paid at least $7 million to air the interview, which hit prime time in North America just hours after the Queen's own message. Looking forward, relationships with others across the Commonwealth will remain important. In that broadcast, there was no hint of the rift or some of the dark revelations made in the interview. Now, Meghan admitted that she was very naive uh, when it came to marrying into the royal family. She didn't know just what to expect, but she said initially everybody was very welcoming to her. She said that that really changed after the tour that she and Harry took to the South Pacific. After that, the couple said that they really felt trapped and felt they had no other option but to leave. Harry revealed, Ian, that last year he was basically cut off financially from the family. He talked about how disappointed he was uh, in his father and, and the strained relationship there. And while most most of the interview did focus on the couple's past. They did talk about the future. They're expecting their second child. And in that interview, Ian, they revealed that they're expecting a baby girl. All right, Briar, thanks for this. Welcome. So royal watchers such as Sarika Bowes are keeping a close eye on the interview tonight. She's a lecturer at UBC and joins us from here in Vancouver. So lots of details in there, Sarika. What are your thoughts about what you've just watched? Well, I think the first thing that really I noticed was that I was hearing a narrative of overcoming injustice. And so I saw a lot of words and a lot of concepts underlying the interview, words like entrapment, uh, marginalization, racism, financial insecurity, protection, all of these kinds of ideas ran through the entire interview and two of the most important points that were mentioned many times were mental health and self-harm as well as racism and the idea was that there was a great deal of racist behavior once two things happened. One was the Australian tour and one was the announcement of the new baby and there was discussion about not giving the baby a title, discussion about the color of the baby's skin, and discussion really about racist attitudes in the royal family. And I think that particular discussion is probably the most damaging to the royal family. And there's going to be a lot of discussion to come. We literally have 15 seconds, but let me just ask you, are you surprised at the, the level of candor in that interview? I'm not very surprised, no. All right. Sarika, uh, thanks for joining okay. us. Okay. Thank you.